microphone working? Yeah. We're quite familiar with the productivity definition in economical terms, right? We have to do something with our input and then we're gonna get the maximum output. So you're gonna work in an efficient and effective way and make the most use of the tools out there and then on the other side, your output is gonna be awesome. You're gonna get more time, money, services, products, whatever more you want, right? Because that's the definition. Now let's have a quick reality check. Honest question, no judgment. How many of you identify with the following situations? Just show me by raising your hand. You're in a meeting, you have no idea why you're there. You're not giving value, you're not getting value. <laughs> you're doing something else, right? Or you're somewhere with friends and then this very important message comes in and you didn't get told. Or maybe it was just a cat video, but yourself you did something. Thank you. <laughs> or you wanna spend quality time with your family and it turns into a device party with food, right? Or when you have kids or friends with kids and you wonder, should you protect them? Should you put them in a bubble and isolate them from technology? Or should you give them technology? But then you realize they know it's so much better than you. My kid wants to be a YouTuber, by the way. He's nine. <laughs> or when you're at a conference, but you kind of want to check your mails because you don't know what's going on in the office. Again, no judgment. Or when you have this pile of things waiting for you after a long week and you kind of should be done with work because it's Friday, but everything seems to be kind of urgent and important, right? So isn't this the paradox of the digital revolution? We have mobile phone lanes. And this is not a Photoshop, this is a photo in Manchester, a company realized that 70% of us are walking and using their device. So th we have mobile phone lanes. And I think this is really crazy <laughs> because on one side, we have a lot of information about how we work, what makes us better or what doesn't. Um, we have tools and we have artificial intelligence and we have hardware and software and robots. And all this should actually improve our life, right? It should make it better. And then we're trying to survive from Monday to Monday, from meeting to meeting, from deadline to deadline, from notification to notification. I call this the survival of the deadline. <laughs> and let's just you know, think for a second. We're incredibly privileged to fight the survival of the deadline. Even today, there are people fighting the survival for their existence, for you know, physical survival, or what to put on the table. So we are in a really privileged area right now to talk about the survival of the deadline. But then, what do we do? Because I think that the privilege comes with the responsibility. The privilege that I get to have to university degrees, that I get to talk to people about productivity, that I get to work on the topic I'm very passionate about, the fact that people call me to go to different countries, that is a huge privilege. But then, do I have to do something about it? I think I should, because on the other side, we have burnout rates, which are re reaching rooftop numbers. Um, we have young people with burnout. This is crazy. So I think we have to do something. I, hear, I think we need a solution. And the adventure towards productivity started not at work, but behind the scenes, there was a personal situation. And here's what happened. A few years ago, I fell in love, which is a good thing in this case, it's good. Um, we just had to come up with a solution to design our life in such a way that we do the jobs we love, but we also have enough time for our family. Our situation is a bit special. We live in Austria and in Germany. We both get to travel a lot and to manage remote teams. And at home, we have a patchwork family and we have five kids. Yes, this is patchwork. Five lovely kids between seven and 13. Our oldest is turning 14. So we had this conversation, okay, how, how to do it? We need an individual solution. We're not ready to give up on our jobs, but we're also not ready to outsource our kids. 
or sell them, right? So <clears throat> this being said, I started to look at productivity. This is how my adventure started. And from this turning point to the point where people were calling me out of coaching sessions or trainings or, or team group work and all that. And be before they're telling me, you know, I, it really works and I saved time and I made it home for dinner. I did have an adventure and I'm still having it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There is no method. Uh, productivity Rockstars is just an approach. There is no method, there is no app, there is no um, one, two, three formula. There is no such thing because we are very different. And the first question I get, okay, now I know I should get productive, so what do I do? Where do I start? Anywhere. It doesn't matter where you start. Here's what's gonna happen if you research on productivity, you get tools, methods, hacks, all that. If you're gonna do your research, you're gonna find out that everything you do impacts your productivity and your performance. Literally everything. Um, just to give you the bottom line, it's from the thoughts you have, the system of beliefs, and your outlook of life. Um, then your habits. Do you have healthy eating, sleeping, working habits, exercise? The people you're working with, the environment you're in, the goals, but not only the goals, the way you set them, the way you evaluate them, the way you communicate them, right? And then you can go on to decisions, to workflows, to habits, to tools, to all that. And I think that is quite overwhelming. And it's a little bit like diets. We know about healthy food, but diets don't work. <laughs> because we all have a very personal situation. Most of the times when we have to produce a result, we kind of know how this should look like. We have an idea. A lot of the times you also have standards because society, industry, life, whatever. But the way we get there is very different and is very unique. So whenever you start working on your productivity, my best advice is really to start anywhere but to think what might work for you in your particular situation. Simple example, my currency in productivity, one of my biggest currencies is time. Again, luxury problem, I know, but it is like that. So I wanna do an experiment with you right now. I wanna see if we can save some time with a very simple trick. You should find below your seat a piece of paper and a pen. Please take that. If you're wondering if we should quit paper, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not so sure. For the ones who are streaming, you can do the same. Now, I want to find out on how many channels I can reach you. And I will ask you to write down those channels for you. Just trust the process. So I'm gonna say the channels, and whenever you identify yourself with one, just write them down. Set, go, here we go, okay. Private cell phone, work cell phone, work office line, phone line. Text messages, if you have two phones, count them twice. WhatsApp, um, the ones uh, who are working in Asia might use WeChat. LinkedIn, LinkedIn messages. Facebook, Facebook messages. Instagram, Instagram messages. The ones in the German-speaking countries may also use Xing, Xing messages. Emails, and then you get the work mail, and then the private mail, and then the fake mail for newsletter, right? <laughs> okay, um, internal company chat like Slack or Jammer. Whatever project management tools you might be using, um, Asana, Monday, Kanban Flow, whatever. What did I leave out? What else do we have? Skype, thank you, Skype, the regular Skype and the Skype for business. <laughs> and let's not forget about Zoom or Webex. <laughs> okay, now count the channels, add whatever I missed out. And then turn the page and write me the number, like quite big, I really wanna see it from here. And let's see, on how many channels can I reach you? I can't see behind, give me some numbers. 16, 16, 9, 11, 15, 20, 7, 6. Who has more? Who has less? Zero. 
zero. How do you do that? This is it. I decide who should reach me and who should not reach me. That's exactly where I want to go. It's not bad to be on these channels, and I will not tell you to quit social media. It's just another way of socializing. But here's what happens. Let's take only 10 channels. So we have between 6 and, and 20 channels where we can be rich, and we really need them. You know, for me as a coach, I talk to people in their preferred channels because they are the people I am supporting. That's not the point. The point is what happens in your daily life where you don't cut off the notifications? We have a limited cognitive capacity. It is how it is. We are not robots and we're not getting so far that our brain can process so much information at once. So if you leave all the notifications and if you even keep your cell phone ringing, then you're going to do something, then something else will pop out which will interrupt you, sometimes for just one minute, but sometimes for 10 to 20 minutes to get back to your focus. So if you want to save between one and two hours a day, cut off the notifications and be proactive in dealing with technology. Because it's not about technology being bad or not, it's about developing new habits because the world is changing. And this is the first thing I do with everybody who comes to me to design an exclusive productivity setup. I see about how we manage the information flow. And if you do that, you're not only going to save time, you are going to get a different quality of time. You're gonna get the freedom to focus for a few hours on what matters, alone or with others and to be proactive in checking the messages and when to reply to them. And you can do the same thing for passwords. Um, there are different studies on how much time we waste, how much living time to retrieve a password. <laughs> and nobody, <coughs> sorry, nobody can remember that. So use a password manager. There are different levels of security. Don't use the one, two, three passwords. Please really don't. Um, but you're going to save life time. And then you're going to get the opportunity to spend this time with intention in a proactive way. The same for the paperwork, right? So you know the drill. You can save a lot of time by doing that. The next thing I'm going to share as a part of my adventure, productivity is a team sport. It would be quite easy for me to tell you what to do to develop the right habits of sleeping, eating, and so on and so forth, and I'm going to send you to a forest to work alone and focus, but we know life is not happening like that. So whenever you want to work on your productivity, look at the people around you which are involved in this kind of setups and do something about it and challenge this. Because it's not about what happened in the past, it's about how we deal with what's happening right now. Um, classical example, meeting. And this is the classical meeting example. A few people are involved, one is dreaming, two are flirting. <laughs> really? Sounds familiar? It is like that. And of course, we all know that for meetings, we have an agenda, right? And then we're going to, if you're going to do the remote meeting, then you're going to send the invitation. And then you're going to waste some more time with, can you hear me? I'm sorry, my Skype just broke down. Of course, yes, this is the technicality. But what I'm trying to get is, what is the meeting culture you want to enforce? Do you really have to be in every meeting? Are you really giving and getting value? I had this in a coaching with an executive, and when I wanted to challenge the meeting culture, he said, no, it's very important that people are aligned. And then I said, let's see how much money you're wasting by putting the wrong people in the meetings. It is crazy. Um, I have heard a team at MDI, they just cut through a fix. And whenever the topic comes up, they find some time to talk about it. So it's. There is no pill, again, but it is about the intention. Do you spend the time with intention? Do you want to enforce a positive meeting culture? Then you will get quality time. And my favorite topic, the emails. How many emails do you get a day? 10, 20, 50, 100, 60, more, less? 80. Oh, yeah, Jan, I know. <laughs> 
So it depends on which research you believe, but we have between 120 and 200 incoming mails. So no Facebook, no cat videos, no chats, no WhatsApp. Incoming mails. A typical sea level has between 120 and 200 incoming mails. And they spend about 25% of the time producing mails. Some more interesting facts about mails. We check our mail proactive about 37 times a day. So not when the notification comes in and you lost focus, that's what we had before. But when you are somewhere at the bus stop or waiting between two meetings, then you check your mails. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but still, maybe too much. We use about 22 minutes at least to move mails to folders. <laughs> Why do we need mail folders, literally? I, I find people with like 20, 30, 50 mail folders, who cares? You either save it on the database if it's very important or you move it away and you're most probably never going to need it again. And then you can use the search function. And there, take the 20 minutes five times a week or seven because most of us are workaholics, right? <laughs> and then put it on one ear. It's incredible and the Emails in your inbox, which you read, but you did not remove, are also costing you about half an hour a day. Because the moment you're gonna check your mails again, you're gonna waste a few seconds reading them, right? So there are a lot of things you can do. My hack, I have a combination of several productivity methods. Some are famous, uh, like the Eisenhower method. You know this, one, two, three, four, priority, getting things done, also a really good method, and zero inbox. So what I do is I decide really in a few minutes if I wanna do something about it or not. Um, I schedule, so if it's a mail which requires more time, then it directly goes to my to-do list. Um, I, I don't manage a zero inbox all the time, but close to zero, and it's an incredible feeling of freedom to see that it, there are only five things in your inbox and not a few hundred because the inbox is not a to-do list, right? Um, let's not confuse activity with results, the activity of doing mails with the result of getting things done. Um, I hardly have one or two folders. I don't have notifications. Um, and that was weird. When I switched off my mail notifications, I felt weird. <laughs> I admit that. I really, really felt weird. There's like something missing, some misconnection, until I had to adjust and just to discover that it's really no big deal and that I get a lot more time quality. And I also am a big friend of keyboard shortcuts because that's another thing where people waste time just moving something with the mouse. Um, I recommend them or uh, using voice to dictate emails. The last part of the adventure I will share with you because of time Make technology work for you. I'm not gonna recommend you a new app. Most of us have already very good apps. You seldom need a new one. Most of the time you have to kick some apps out of your system and be a minimalist. So sometimes you're gonna have the robots who are gonna make your life easier and wait for people. I met the, I met the Pepper robot at a conference and they used it for people with dementia and this bought time for the caregivers. So sometimes technology is a good thing, and sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's just taking a break. We heard this in, in, in the previous keynote, right? Our brain needs a break. Just some time to breathe and to get out of the regular system and to come back with creative ideas. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many hours you worked. It matters which results you can deliver and which impact you can produce. That's the point. If you have spent the quality time with the people who matter and on the things who matter to you, because you're, you're gonna get so many opportunities. You're gonna get so many projects and jobs and so on, but you can't go back and buy another health. You can't go back and buy the time that you missed with your family or with the loved ones. It's just not going to happen. We're not so far, the humanity is not so far yet, right? Um, so this is what I want to give you in terms of productivity. It doesn't matter where you start, just start and try it out and make it work for you. Involve others and really be very selective, be a minimalist. And 
my team and I decided um, for this conference to create a productivity challenge. So please write us an email at hello at productivityrockstars.com. Um, we will read them. No, we don't have the notifications activated, but we do read and reply to those. You can also register for the challenge, and I'm going to send you some mails. But please write me, what are your struggles in terms of productivity, and how can I deliver value to you? Thank you very much. Thank you.